I'm so excited to start part two of a five-part series in which every Monday for five weeks, I'm sharing 100 scrapbooking pages from my time in Close to My Heart as a Close to My Heart maker. And I'm doing this as a tribute to Close to My Heart and all of the joy that I've received creating scrapbooking workshops um, as a maker in Close to My Heart. And I'm gonna tell you, it was really tough to narrow down and and pick out the next 100 pages. If you didn't catch my first 100 pages, I'll link those in the description. Before we start with the next 100 pages, I wanted to talk just briefly and address a comment that I received. So last week I shared my first 100 pages and some of those didn't have photos, a lot of them actually. So I wanted to explain how I do things, how I did things in Close to My Heart, and how I will continue to do things in Stampin' Up. Oftentimes when I create a workshop guide for myself and my customers to be able to keep do our memory keeping, I will create more than one version. I might create a simple version and an elevated version. I might create a feminine version and a masculine version. I might create a Halloween version and a non-Halloween version. Oftentimes I will end up with with two versions. So for example, as you grow, I created a more masculine version for my grandson, Waylon James, and a more feminine version for my granddaughter, um, Ramsey Kate. And then I will not only create more than one version for a scrapbooking workshop, but I often will do my own proofing cut. So I will create a guide and then with that guide, I will um, test it out and I will do another cut. So that will give me a third workshop, for sure a second workshop, if not a third workshop using the same materials. And though I've probably created over 3,000 um, workshop pages in my Close to My Heart career, I can't possibly use 3,000 pages. So I have thousands of pages for sure, but I can't possibly use all of those pages. So here we have feminine version, here we have masculine version. Here we have um, a, a masculine version with my son, my grandson, Waylon James, in his little fishing outfit and a feminine version. So this is this pattern flipped over. These are that same pattern flipped over. These are the same pattern flipped over. Just showing them ways that they can have versatility with one paper collection. So often I will give away my extra layouts. I will give them as gifts. I will make wedding albums out of them, birthday albums out of them. I will sell them sometimes. Sometimes I simply keep them in themed albums. So I'll put all the fall layouts in a fall album and all of the birthday layouts in an album and so on and so forth. But I did not want to take 500 pages out of all of my albums. So if I had a set that wasn't put away yet and didn't have photos on it, I opted to show that to all of you. And the ones that have photos on them are actually out of my albums. Okay, so I hope that helps. All right, let's go. We're going to have to boogie if we're going to get through all of these. So Heroes Are Helpers was, of course, during the pandemic, and Close to My Heart gave away a free SVG on the blog. If you type on the blog, Helpers Are Heroes, you will see that free SVG, and I use that with um, a background shape and a lot of different pattern paper scraps that I had to document my daughter, who is a nurse at this hospital, and her sister-in-law, who is also a nurse, and their journey during during the pandemic. I wanted to be able to document the pandemic and though it was a very sombering, sobering time, I wanted to be able to still make amazing pages that had a design element, but to be able to tell the story. So I put my entire Corona pandemic story here in a nice little stitched together um, 
Cricut piece. And then I printed on photo paper our, uh, our total active cases map. And then I cut that out. And then there was a ton of free print printables on social media at that time. So I printed some of those out and cut those out. And then all of the Cricut elements are from our Stitch Together collection, which came out at about that same time. And again, documenting my daughter, who's the nurse, the toilet paper shortage, visiting with friends on Zoom, distancing, and my crafting time during that time, and all of the empty shelves. And I am so happy that I did that because I want my kids and grandkids to have that story. Here is a fun summer vibes collection. I'm historic for large Cricut elements. So I took this large sun from our summer vibes collection and backed it with all kinds of paper pieces and the rest was simple. To me, it reminded me of the beach, of a picnic, of a wonderful summer day and then just added my journaling there and this was a day at the lake with several of my grandkids. Oops, I'm dropping pieces here. All right, this is an old, old, oldie. This is called Sangria, one of the very first pages that I did. And the reason I pulled this out is because of the pattern. The pattern is from one of our pattern books and I used our pattern books a ton in the beginning and I still use them today. And I can't imagine, speak up if you're one, but I can't imagine a maker out there that has not used this pattern out of our pattern books. It is classic and timeless and I actually still love that pattern today. And twine was a big deal for sure. This one was called Celebrate Celebrating You. We had Celebrating Today, Celebrating Today, Celebrating You. I think this one was says uh, Celebrating Today. And I loved this collection because it was the introduction of layered embellishments. So we had some layered embellishments that would, um, would go right on top of each other. And I cut a Cricut circle, put paper strips that were torn across from it, and then trimmed out the circle and it used it as that back focal piece, left a few blanks for journaling, and then one focal photo. And I love the addition of the silver elements. This one is really reaching back a ways. This was called Yesterday and Today, and it was a um, nostalgic vintage um, series that was really, really great for heritage. So there was lots of old wallpapery feel papers, note papers, and a lot of ink distressing, clustering of stickers, and then I did a little bit of Cricut writing, and mostly clustering the pieces that came right in the kit. They had wooden shapes and that was when we began markering and coloring on top of the shapes to give them a distressed vintage feel instead of a new feel. This was a classic. I know many of you are going to remember Seize the Day. Seize, S-E-A-S, Seize the Day. This also is one of the very first workshops that I did. I wanted to have a lot of photo opportunities, but an enormous decorative element because of the bits and pieces that came with it. It was around the time that we received our circle shaker, stitched circle shaker elements where we got acetate and foam. So I created a shaker window out of those pieces on a porthole that at that time we didn't have a porthole on our Cricut collections. So I just dragged circles into that. And then our flowers were, I believe, off of our state's collection collection, Georgia. Um, I loved those. And we had a lot of little sea pieces, including the tropical fish. And then we had a great little border here that we also could use. We had starfish, we had shells, we had lots on our Cricut collections. And I loved the blue wood grain in this collection. It was so fun. And what I loved about this is you have six regular photos and four additional circle photos for 10 photos on that layout, but an enormous decorative element. It was a win-win. 
one more of our seize the day and i just chose this one to share because of the uh, the gorgeous embossing folder so we had a seashell embossing folder that was so gorgeous we didn't have a lighthouse on our cricut collection um and so i created my own and i created my own ship's wheel back then and i also actually created the fence by welding we know now we have lighthouses we have ship's wheels we have fences we have so much more so we don't have to create our own anymore but clustering up and adding a basic photo grid still reaching back even farther to my very first scrapbooking workshop that I ever created in 2017 and it was using a collection called Jack Jack was a lumberjack series and I created this uh, piece here by actually welding circles and lines together and letters together. We know now we have compasses and we have everything now, but back then we did not. I had to create my own, use the take a hike and everything we did back then had twine, it had string and we had corner rounders and we had a lot of round photos back then. It was a thing very much a thing I often look back and I cringe at some of my earlier layouts and I think oh my gosh but I want to keep them forever I want to have the history of scrapbooking and look back at how we have evolved over the years in scrapbooking again another jack this was one of the very first layouts that I ever stamped on in my life I never stamped on layouts prior to jack and I never made a workshop guide prior Prior to Jack. So stamping, 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 uh, stamping, 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 stamping. So wow, I gave it a try. A very simple basic layout with a simple grid, but incorporating all of those icons through stamping. This next one was super interesting, very old, but it was using some of our gold elements. And so we had some acetate paper that had gold elements embedded in it. We had vellum paper that had gold elements in it. I had a gold glitter pen for the Cricut. We had ribbon that had gold pieces in it. And then we had die cuts that had gold pieces as well with our gold glitter paper and I had so much fun with this one just making all things gold using the introduction of our gold shimmer brushes on that and it was just for funsies it was not a workshop it was just something that I did here we had Zoe another earlier one and we received a pinwheel thin cut I did some Cricut drawing in the background with multicolored Cricut pens created the die cut pinwheels out of our pinwheel thin cut and used a pinwheel as the all in today. Today is a good day and one of my little granddaughters there. Um, I did a lot of large Cricut elements in the beginning. I still love large Cricut elements, but it was truly a signature for me back then in the beginning. Cricut writing in the back, large kites, paper pieced with the Zoe paper, and then we had beautiful friendship bows that I'm sure out there you're thinking they last for a decade. I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> they've lasted a long time I think we've used them on everything that we could possibly use them on so very simple layout with the Cricut elements being the focal so next we had crisp air and I did this one to teach how to take background papers that are gorgeous and use them in a way that still allows those background elements to show so I added a combination of Cricut leaves some drawing on those some stickers we had some cork shapes we had some loose sequins and I incorporated all of those together into clusters 
and then I was able to cluster some photos and still see the paint streaks down the side. Now I grabbed another one. I didn't count this in the 100 uh, layout, so you actually get more than 100, but I wanted to show my paper crafters how you could reduplicate something that you like out of paper strips. So they could make a background like that by streaking ink and doing ink pad painting. This was a background paper. You could also do that simply using paper strips and reduplicate what a background looks like. The next one, I was really into making unique shakers. So at this time, and this was called um, Boo Crew, I think it was called Boo Crew, and we had our circle shaker window, but we didn't yet have our heart, our star, our little balloon, our rectangle, our square. I don't think that we did, and I was into creating shakers out of odd shapes. So what I did is I created the pumpkin on the Cricut and sliced a hole out of the middle, added another more detailed pumpkin under there and then the acetate under that then the foam under that and created a really really cute shaker element for the page and um boo crew which i think this is boo crew had non-traditional colors i'm more of a traditional halloween girl but i absolutely love the color scheme in boo crew it was so fun as was the shaker element and i was showing paper crafters how you can use our acetate and make all kinds of different shaker elements. So I actually cut the um, buckle part of the hat out of the Cricut and made that into a little shaker element by just snipping our shaker acetate. And so that was really fun. This one came with a stamp and thin cut. So some of them are stamps and thin cuts and some of those are stickers and some of those are Cricut cuts. Back to, is this still crisp air? I think this is another crisp air. And again, showing another unique shaker. So creating the leaf on the Cricut, slicing the center of it out, putting the acetate on the top. And then we had some gorgeous sequins that were fall sequins that were filled with fall colors and little maple leaves um, and they were just so maple leaves they were so 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 cute creating a classic leaf here with some acorns and some leaves very simple page but it was so fun then we had Celebrate Today. This was one of the first collections um, with my time in Close to My Heart where they had extra paper collections in our core catalog. So our core catalog usually was our supplies that lasted throughout the year, but um, they had a core catalog that they decided to add extra paper collections to them and they were extra large collections and I was so excited. So I I created with celebrate today and you guys know that one of my signatures is creating stitched frames I wanted to do something besides a scallop frame a stitched frame a just a plain square so I drug some diamonds onto a square in my Cricut and sliced out that diamond sequin 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 oh my gosh the the diamond pattern <laughs> <laughs> and then I backed it with patterned paper um, and then added some clear sparkles. And then in the age of being able to make two by two photos on our print to size, it was perfect to have that decorative element on the back. And I actually did even more. So this was taking busy pattern elements and offsetting those pattern elements with solid colors. So I have solid, solid, solid in a visual triangle around busy strips and I did pattern and then offset strip pattern offset strip and so just showing how you can make vibrant and fun layouts with busy patterns and different ways to tone those patterns down we also did a lot of background splatter and we had layered die cuts that were layered right on top of acrylics and i think i probably have an example of that in one of my layouts here so here we have another set 
celebrate today. This is a more modern twist with this where it was very popular to split your pieces instead of having a center grid, split your pieces and have a focal title in the middle. So what I did is I laid paper strips horizontally onto a background. Once they were all adhered in place, I sliced them down vertically to make a multi-pattern and use every pattern in the pack and then added silver accents, did a ton of back ground splatter and made a really cute um, New Year's layout. Here are some examples of those acrylic shapes that had um, die cuts that go right on top of the acryl acrylic shapes and they're pretty dimensional. They add a lot of dimension to your pages and I love the Celebrate Today stickers that had, um, you know, silver embedded and foil embedded right in that. Then we had the implementation of or the entrance of our white gel pens. And so here is those layered titles again. Just look at the detail in those. And they added cricket uh, or acrylics right on top of chipboard die cuts for those layers. Really cool. Here was another standard grid using the grid as a background instead of putting the photos in the grid. And I loved that play and the play with all the silver, silver elements in that as well. And I talked on my last 100 layout share how sometimes I like to be brave and I like to try something different and sometimes it flies and sometimes it doesn't. But it's kind of nice to be brave and experiment. So I was brave with some loops and um, I went back to our roots. Remember brads? We, I had brads, I mean buckets of brads. We used metal and brads on our pages. So I grabbed out my brads and I just made little loops that reminded me of a party and then a basic whimsical grid over here with layered papers and you see a lot of those dimensional layered die cuts which are so fun and just so shimmery. Loved that. Now we're going backwards again to a, lay, uh, a theme called Into the Wild. Into the Wild, nope, this is a single page, sorry. Into the Wild was a rustic, woodsy um, pa paper line, and it actually also had a baby vibe. So it had little baby animals like baby frogs and baby moose. And this is my grandson, Waylon James, and I actually pulled the paper from longer ago and paired it with some new thin cuts that we received. So we got some circle thin cuts that were in quadrants and so we were able to make quadrant circles it had stamps that came with it so we could stamp directly on the page and add circle elements it also had wooden die cuts that came with it and some great wood paper and we call our little Waylon James I call him little man um, I think his mama calls him Bubba, <laughs> but he's my little man, even though his, uh, his daddy was my, is my son, my youngest son, and he's six foot seven. And I have a feeling Waylon James isn't going to be our little man for very long, but he's our little man right now. Another one of Into the Wild, there's those die cuts that I told you about that lent themselves to baby pages, a little bit of white gel pen just on some half circles, and it's a super basic page. There's the stamping of those circles, those stamp circles, and the addition of the wooden shapes. One more uh, reaching back into Into the Wild. Here is Waylon James, and he's sleeping, and a little lullaby page, again with those same techniques. Those circles stamping directly on the page, stamping on cardstock. What I love about those circles is this isn't any pattern paper here, but you feel like you have plenty to work with. Super basic this way. The little tiny bit of pattern paper here and zip strip and all the rest is created out of cardstock. 
Okay, we're going to go to Isabella. And one of the reasons that I chose this one for Isabella is I was teaching how to be able to stretch a background. So we have a gutted frame for one background, but we want to tie in the other page. So we're using a smaller piece. So that leaves us this much of the inside to use for something else and this much of the top to use for something else. But it feels like you used full pattern. Patterns. And then adding a large Cricut element. And then Isabella had these great florals and lemons that I just did a simple, easy uh, rubbing technique with blending brushes and ink on that. That was fun. I also chose this one um, because I wanted to show how you could um, do a, a fancier layout or an elevated layout without Cricut cuts and without die cuts. So in this one, every single piece here is fussy cut out of pattern paper. So we had a large floral sheet that had large floral patterns on it and all of these pieces were cut out of it. This was, these were stickers from the sticker sheet and I've just put them on cardstock so that they would pop up and four little, three little basic strips of paper here and two strips along the side. So easy. Um, um, to use those busy pattern papers. One more Isabella. In the Isabella workshop kit and in all of our workshops now, we get extra die cut pieces, meaning punch outs. So these were punch out pieces that came right in the kit and I loved that play upward to have a little different play than a piece that's straight across. And then I could use just strips on the bottom and the top so that the middle, there's nothing there and there's no wasted space underneath. And we had acrylic shapes that would go over the top of pattern paper punch outs and stickers to add so much dimension and then stickers from the sticker sheet and a little bit of background inking techniques on that. Going back into a very basic one, we had Hillside Cottage. The reason I show, chose this one was because we had a pattern paper piece or die cut piece and then a square inside and you could pull the square out put the square on the opposite page and create a, a mesh so that the two pages coordinated with each other but you were only using one sheet of that paper and so you can add the diamond on this one you could have a smaller square and cut it on diagonals to just add the corners there and not waste a whole piece of paper. So I was showing how you could get a full and rich layout using less paper. And then Home is Where the Heart Is was off of the Hillside Cottage Digital Collection. One more from Hillside Cottage. So simple, so basic, and so classic. You see this layout over and over again, and I'm always interested to see it with larger squares, smaller squares, squares arranged in diamonds, squares arranged in a slant, squares arranged in different elements, and it's always interesting how the different patterns can make it look so different if you use that same pattern on multiple layouts. Ooh, we're really going back here. This was a single page that I created. I believe it was a challenge, a cardstock only challenge. And we had got a, a thin cut that was this star. And there were different sizes of stars, which was so fun. And then we also got a happy thin cut and a hello thin cut. And then this is all cardstock in the back. And some of it is embossed like with our chevron folder. And then we have light side, dark side cardstock to add an extra element there and then we had these acetate uh, cards they were four by six and three by four that had gold bits embedded in that to just add some texture under there and then I was really into finding quotes and things typing them and then printing them on cardstock oh boy 
really going back here. So this was back in the day when twine was all in and interactive booklets were the thing. So we had so many of these little interactive booklets on our pages and you could flip them over. This is my husband and myself on a hot summer night and he's grilling some steaks out at the ranch for me. And yeah, and so we created these little booklets and then by scoring and we would cut out bits and pieces of our page protector, tie it in a nice string, and then have an interactive element that you could pull out of your pages. And this was created just by using a stamp set and fussy cutting. So we had a barbecue grill stamp set and we had build a plaid and we created the banner and all the bits by stamping and fussy cutting. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I had to leave it in the page protector to pull it together. I pulled out another simple one. I didn't want to only pull out my elevated pages. I wanted to show some more simple pages and this was part of our subscription program and I was showing how you could change it up to make it fit yourself and how you could elevate it. So I elevated it by adding ribbon, by adding photo mats, by changing up the elements that came right in the kit and doing different things with those same elements. So I just wanted to show people how you could still keep it simple, um, but be able to make it your own. Then we're going to Party Time. Party Time was another one of those collections that was in our core catalog that had extra paper and it was reversible. So you could do Party Time Blue, you could do Party Time Pink, and you could simply flip the pages. And I loved showing how you could take an absolutely nothing to it, very basic strips in the background, add large Cricut elements on the top and a large Cricut element on the bottom and be done and still have featured photos. I thought that that was so fun adding those balloons to that. Here is another party time. And do you guys remember our stitched scalloped border? Large stitched scallop border. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they're stitching on all of those. And oh boy, oh boy, did makers everywhere make snow out of that. They made little hills. They made borders. They made, <laughs> they made clouds. They made everything out of those stitched borders. And it was simply layering those stitches borders down on colorful paper and of course back then it was twine 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 everything was twine this was just a for funsies this wasn't part of a workshop but it was showing ways to highlight a featured stamp color within the stamp coordinate it with just glitter papers and primarily card stocks and so I was uh, sharing my soul with the world I was in Arizona and I was hiking and I was the victor um, and so that was a fun one with the Cricut Mountains on top okay I think so I've showed you celebrate you and I think this one is celebrate today I have a celebrate you and a celebrate today that I get the elements mixed up but I was really into vellum during this time so I made shaker elements out of the stars and that added vellum over the top did some embossing on some pieces and we had die cut stars with this set where we just punched out all the die cut stars but we also had a happy birthday embossing folder that had wonderful birthday sentiments on it and a wave embossing folder and then our classic Swiss dot did some splattering in the background and just made a really fun colorful page. So we also in that same kit got the pinwheels and then this came with so many punch out circles, punch out circles that had hearts, punch out circles that had titles. It had clear acrylic shapes. I don't know if you can see those clear acrylic shapes that you could put stickers over the top. So these were acrylic shapes and you could put stickers over the top to make them look like clothes pins. And then the Polaroid pieces came right in the kit. And then it had a wonderful floral background that people 
used for so many things. Wow, we're getting there. We're getting, we're over, well over half done. So fall is my favorite of all. It is my favorite season and sangria, one of our retired colors, was one of my most favorite colors of all. So in, um, Bloom with Grace. This Bloom with Grace was such a popular set. It was used and used and used, but we had a punch out background overlay that had the maple leaf cut out of it. I can't remember if the word, the wood grain paper came with Bloom with Grace or if it was a season mix in, but I backed it with the wood grain, created some tags, backed the Cricut cuts with pattern paper, and the rest is stickers and wooden pieces. Really basic, but I love Loved that punch out overlay background. It was so much fun. This one, I was showing how to use hard to use patterns. So even though it's a really cool pattern, I had trouble using that wood grain. It was a little bit much when it was all together. So I showed my paper crafters how they could cut it in strips, back it with cardstock to tone it down and make a little uneven fence, and then bloom with grace had a digital collection with these gorgeous sunflowers and my favorite part of the sunflowers is this cool grid center and then I added goldenrod stickles on top and then created this on the Cricut as well and added little stickers sometimes when you get to the end of your big stickers on a sticker sheet you can make a title and a subtitle out of smaller stickers and then there were wooden shapes that came with that as well this was one of my all-time favorite Bloom with Grace layouts. Um, I loved creating this with, of course, my classic um, scalloped frames, a classic circle, splattering on the circle with some of our inks or our shimmer brushes, adding the wooden shapes, and then all of these were stickers and layering the photo elements. It was so easy. I've used this style of a layout over and over and over. I love to shop my old patterns. This was also another Bloom with Grace that came with die cuts that were part of the wheel. And I just chose to create a, a Cricut circle and add each of those pieces to the wheel and do some layering with some of those, curve the title over, added the wood grain pieces to draw that out. And we had some beautiful, beautiful sangria ribbon that I loved and I used over and over again. Whoa, we are really going backwards here. Who remembers Adventure and Whimsy and all of those collections? That This was one of those from years and years ago, and I just used the entire sheet as a background and toned that down with pattern cardstock and regular cardstock, and this is my grandson, uh, Carter Kirk, and I made him a dirt cake and I made all of the little elements on the Cricut for his dirt cake and we had little shapes with ink writing on them that were like craft shapes who remember I'm trying to think of the other we had adventure we had whimsy there were two more basic there was one more, Adventure Whimsy Basic, and I feel like it started with an A. This one was called the Showtime Collection, and it was a featured stamp with cardstock only. So the collection had cardstock only and gold um, foil paper and a stamp set. So it was learning to stamp, 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 stamp and then adding different elements. It was back in the day when we didn't have everything that I wanted on a Cricut collection. We didn't have any movie reels. We didn't have a clapper board. So I created my own by dragging circles on there and slicing them out. But it was a fun collection. The popcorn I made out of a cloud and then I made a triangle and cut the bottom off and put red shimmer trim down it to make a popcorn box. I am laughing inside at how we we have a die cut for everything now and we forget when we began we had to create a lot of things by hand. A couple more simple ones here. We had a magical collection that was an eight and a half by 11. And this was my conversion kit 
converting those eight and a half by 11 pages into 12 by 12s because I wasn't an, uh, an eight and a half by 11 scrapper and then doing some splattering and different things like that in the background. Here's one more of those that show how I converted those eight and a half by 11 bits and pieces into a 12 by 12 and it was called magical. We had magical, we had more magical, and then we had an over-the-top version that was called Happiest Place. Happiest Place was a digital collect or a, a Disney collection that had a digital collection as well. And so I showed two ways that you could use Happiest Place, one that was Disney and one that was non-Disney. So we had these great fireworks on the Happiest Place collection and we had a lot of digital pieces, all of the little swirls, these little things I actually created. I uh, uh, cut out the beach house, did cricket drawing, did ink blending, rubbing and splattering to make a happiest place is shooting fireworks off at the beach and having 4th of July at the beach or just celebrating New Year's or anything like that at the beach. So here is its counterpart. This is the Disney version of Happiest Place. So I did a 12 page workshop that was Disney themed and a 12 page workshop that was non-Disney. So I cut out the Mickey head or mini head um, out of the base did cricket writing back in the day when we didn't have the curved text tool. So yes, I drug each letter uh, around the shape. Now you can type, curve it with your curved text tool and it's easy. Added pattern paper strips. We had <clears throat> pattern paper with this Happiest Place collection that had silver embedded in it. And then all of these pieces were from the collection. But what I did it with the Happiest pa Place fireworks is I cut a, mi a mini head out of the firework by slicing it out of the firework to give it that Disney vibe. The other ones did not have the Mickey head out of the center. So I just added the mini head and then had playful fun with that. One more from the Happiest Place collection, basic grid on the right, but I did a play of stripes uh, going across, put the cardstock back and then layered it with either Cricut elements or foil cardstock or pattern paper and making them different sizes and dovetailing some and not others and then doing that photo layer on top. The camera was from our Happiest Place collection and then we also had acrylic shapes with that collection. So that was kind of a fun little background. Oh, I guess there's one more. I can't believe there's one more. So this one I created to show how you could do a basic layout when you didn't want to cut the pattern paper. So I was thinking, of course, of Magic Mountain where you have Explorer Mickey and you have the roller coasters going through the mountains. This was from our Summer Vibes collection, digital collection, the, the uh, palms, and then, of course, just making the Mickey out of circles and then adding photos. And I was envisioning uh, the screaming photos they, they get of you when you're going down the roller coaster so we have I have some pictures with myself and my husband at Disney and I'm you can see my tonsils because I'm screaming so loud and my mouth is open and he's just laughing he thinks it's so funny um every little thing was this collection and I pulled this one just because it was the introduction of acrylic shapes and lasers from our company and we had paper pieces and punch outs and stickers that went on the back of those cool acrylic shapes. They also began giving us these die cuts that come right in the kit that you punch out and the early ones were kind of hard to punch out and then they got easier and easier until they would just finally, they perfected them and then they also made these black embossed die cuts for us as well. And then we also had stamped and thin cut pieces. My earlier markering, don't judge, um, I wasn't so great. I'm still not so great at that. But every little thing was a super popular line. I'll probably show in some more of that, some prettier pages in that series down the line when, uh, in more of my, my page shares here when I'm doing my 500 pages. This was called 
Gimme Some Sugar. It was a really early one that had a baking theme, a country theme, little country bumpkin theme. Just added the sun squares on our craft paper. You guys remember our craft paper? We haven't used it in a while. Um, ribbon on everything again, die cuts, embossed pieces on die cuts, and a couple little Cricut cuts. So basic. So, so basic. Then we had a mermaid collection that was called Make Waves, but I made um, five of my layouts or yeah, five of my layouts all mermaid because I have a granddaughter that had a mermaid birthday, but I wanted to make one with that collection showing how you could use it in a different way besides mermaid. And so I did the viewfinder and again, we didn't have a viewfinder, we do now, but I did that by dragging shapes and slicing them out, cute little camera and film strip and it was just a super simple basic page from very long time ago. This was one of my first workshops as well and it was called Postcard Perfect and I believe it was a May National Scrapbooking Special. Now it was a bugger. We did not have thin cuts and so every one of the flowers in this set had to be stamped off and fussy cut. And um, wow, I, I, I loved it. I loved it. But by the time I got done with I don't know how many pages I made, I was tired of fussy cutting. Aren't we spoiled to have all of our thin cuts now? Um, Cricut Cut created this Cricut Cut again by dragging shapes. It came with some vellum, pattern vellum, and I absolutely loved that a lot. And um, so then we had, um, I think my device was going off over there, that same collection here. Um, and it had gold foil papers and it had a tropical vibe and so most of it was stamping so we stamped this design in the background and then it had patterned vellum over the top and again we were very very conservative with this paper this was like the most popular paper in the pattern and I was so scared to use it because we didn't have very much so you look at my early layouts and they're pretty sparse you know they're just kind of but I did didn't want to use up all that paper I was not wanting to use it up but every one of these were fussy cut out stamped and fussy cut stamped and cut all of these were stamped and cut as well a couple little gold Cricut embellishments and then another one of Postcard Perfect that I wanted to show because we got the Buffalo Plaid embossing folder. One of my most favorite embossing folders of all time. So super simple, just squares, but adding embossing, 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 and being chintzy with my pattern paper, and then a couple Cricut elements, and then those stamped flowers again. Oh, it was so pretty. I loved, this was literally, I. I, it may have been one of my very first National Scrapbooking Month projects. Uh, so it's really some of my earlier earlier work. And again, I get a little embarrassed, but, um, but I wouldn't change it for the world because it's the way scrapbooking was back in that time. So this one, I often say I try something weird or I try something new. So I had visions of the flip-flops and hanging them on the clothesline and then cutting the O out and putting the sticker in the middle of the O and just having a really playful fun. Again, it was an ombre background where you didn't really want to cut it apart because you lost the ombre effect. And so I loved being able to create something playful and fun, not something that you would use every day, but it would make a very, very cute page. Okay, so this one I brought on, I'm getting there. Our stack is getting a lot smaller. We're getting really close. I hope you have a good cup of whatever you love and you're sitting back and enjoying. But this was the introduction of splatter stamps and uh, smooshy stamps and all of these blotch stamps. And so we had a cut above kit that had a baby layout that had like first month, second month, third month, fourth month. And I loved that idea, whether it be something in school, whether it be ages, whether it be months. And so I used that blotch stamp and cardstock only. I think I used one 
two Picture My Life cards from, this was called Stargazer. And so I used two Picture My Life cards from Stargazer and the rest was all little cuts um, and blotch stamps. And boy, did we blotch. We blotched and we splattered and it was like, woohoo! This was called The World Is Yours, and it was also a May National Scrapbooking Month special. And it's such a basic layout. I don't know why I brought it out, except for I was showing, again, when you get those gorgeous background pattern, pattern papers, sometimes they can be a struggle. And I had a vision of something coming across on each line. So I altered my photos, and so I could have Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear for the bikes. And then it would be a wonderful little adventure page. I loved the colors in this collection. Boy, we're so close, you guys. So, so close. So we're on party time. We had party time um, pink and party time blue. So I pulled these so you can see the cake and then see another use for that stitched scallop. And then also to show how I did the exact same layout only I reversed the pattern papers backwards. So one side became the other and they're identical in every other way. I have one more collection that I'm gonna share a couple layouts from and then we have done it. We have made it through um, the 200 pages, probably 225, because I threw a little extra in there. Um, but next week on Monday will be our third part in our 500 page series in our nostalgia series will be next Monday. So be sure to shoot me comments and let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think about our older styles and our older collections as well as our new. This was an online event that I did called the Blossom Bash. It was a bring back your pack and it brought back Blossom. I was not a maker when we had the original Blossom. So this was like creating for the very first time. And this was using up everything everything that was left after I created my Blossom workshop. So I used all the leftover stickers and I stamped the border and just added sticker elements to that. Again, always saying I like to try something new, some things that are kind of weird and new. So the Blossom stamp was to die for. So I stamped all of the background and all of the little pieces trailing off, did the splattering, cut a white Cricut circle, laid the photo over and trimmed it off, laid strips down on the bottom and trimmed them off, and then just put all kinds of half circles underneath, stamped some of the Stampin' Thin cuts that came in the stamp set and did a grid of circles only. And again, some of those stamped pieces in, in um, thin cuts there. So pretty, so fun, so playful, a little weird, but sometimes you have to step outside of the box and try something new. There's only so many layouts that you can do. Last layout. All right, we made it through our number two of our five-part series of sharing a hundred layouts. So this is Blossom again. And I created the mason jar on the Cricut, sliced out the center and made it into a fun shaker element. We had some great white linen uh, um, twine and then all of these. I just filled it as full as I could with the Stampin' Thin Cuts. And I love these. In fact, not that long ago, they were still there. The Blossom Stampin' Thin Cut and Timeless. I will use those over and over. Then I made a mini version of that as well and then used that basic, basic background, basic strips. This one was a sticker and then some splattering in the background. We did it. All right, please hit like and subscribe, the notifications bell. So you're around next Monday and you get the notification when I go live with part three of five of my 500 scrapbooking layout share in the nostalgia series, honoring my time with Close to My Heart. Stay tuned right here on Snips by Kelly. Bye-bye.